Nah, we're pretty, pretty safe here, I think. There, there you got guns. Yeah, carry guns. <laughs> So you've seen inside a Dirty Dennis McGee, Tom Horn, Tombstone. Tom Horn is where he comes to get his meal. The kitchen was back there. Uh, he gets into a scuffle, an argument with a... Uh, Inside the building was either donated and stuff. I like to point out that uh, that lamp above you. That was somebody that came here for a tour, and they were like, "Oh, we've got a red lamp at the house, and we don't know what to do with." So they sent it. Bless their hearts, it came in three boxes. But when it finally got here, the red dome was broken. So oh. Mr. Ben Spiegel actually glued it all together, laid it out on a table, oh, yeah. and put it back together. You can kind wow. of see that. Yeah, you could you could see the sides where it cracked. Yeah. Oh, that's a bomber. It's a oh yeah, it's, it was so pretty when we saw it on the pictures, and we're like, oh yeah, we'll we'll do that. But then when it came, it was just broken over. So you know what I found out last week, and I don't know if it's true or not, but somebody told me anytime they make glass red, it's gold. There's gold in the glass. Really? Now, I don't know if it's true, but that's what he told me because he was selling that stuff. That kind of makes sense. Hey, if, it, yeah. if it disappears tonight, you know what <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Geronimo was actually, Tom Horn takes credit for capturing Geronimo. I did not know that. Wow. How do you do that? Well, there's a lot of speculation. <laughs> he had some pretty good stories. It's funny because Steve McQueen was what? Five four five five. Yeah. Tom Horn was six two. So there's an odd difference. Yeah, well they do that in the movies. Like oh yeah, Jack Reaper was like six five, and Tom Cruise is like five six. <laughs> you know they. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're not going upstairs right now, but. Uh, well, wow, that's pretty neat. So this has a lot of history. Yeah, upstairs we actually. Um, uh, an owl gave birth and three of the owls. Uh, Tom Horn, through this, this end of the, this town, has a lot to do in the movie. And the building behind there, what's left of it, up until February, it was a two story building. And then we had snow. Uh. So it collapsed. And since there's not much infrastructure to it, it, it collapsed. It's uh, they're still trying to decide what to do with it. Probably will go away at some point. Um, and then this building in the front was also part of the jail. It was a two-story building. So to complete what I was talking about, when Tom Horn's arrested, he was taken upstairs. He'd never really been in a jail cell before. So he asked the sheriff, Slim Pickens, don't, sh don't close the door until I get to the other side. I can look out the window. And you look out the window, it's supposed to be Wyoming winter or late fall there should be snow up there so they were arranging to make snow for the mountain in here and the day the night before they filmed it snowed oh yeah so it was yeah. quite a coincidence yeah uh in tombstone do you remember the last scene between uh doc holiday and wyatt mm -hmm. and he's in, in the sanatorium hospital. yeah in Glenwood Springs. That was the inside of that building. Oh. It's wow. also been a stage. Huh. Uh, it's been a theater. Uh, it's been a number of, of different things. When they decide, when the when the uh, Herbs decide to leave Tombstone and they head out this way, Behan or Curly Bill, they're sitting on, on there. This, this was a two story building. And I think it was red, maybe. Uh, and they stop. And that's where you, the famous line will buy. Yeah. <laughs> and they're out of town. Ah, uh, right there. <laughs> so if you happen to notice that you see the lights, the lights aren't on. Oh, There's yeah. no it's building behind, behind that. Yeah. Ah, no I got gotcha. you. It's all a facade. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. It's neat how they do that. Let's mosey on. So the, 
this is our, uh, it's kind of like Greg's office, so there are the armors. This is where they do their inventory of all the, the, uh, the guns and the, the arm they decided to pitch in. And this. this was the Jersey Lily in uh, the Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, uh, Paul Newman. It's actually started life out in the desert somewhere and then at some point they moved it into town as the town grew. And like I said, as you see towns grow in movies, it may be for the next production company that's getting ready to come in. So. The other buildings we use is storage. To get our, uh, We're going to walk on around and then go down and go look oh, okay. at the corral. It's okay. You guys remember the OK Corral sign that was out here? Yeah. That actually the tombstone now. It's the original sign and they have it in the hotel tombstone. Ah. She has it up in the main room. You can go in there and take pictures in front of it. But ours is on site. <laughs> well, that hotel tombstone, that's the one that's all the way to the south now, right? Right. right. Okay. Right across the street from Big Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So when the herbs come to head to the OK Corral because Behan or Behan stops him and says he disarmed the Glantons and which was not true. Um, and that was the beginning. So they walked down this street. Oh, there okay. A, there was a building right here that burned. It was, it was a red building. And some kids came out and they went bang, bang, and uh, it just helped build the tension of the story. It's funny because we mentioned this morning, every day when we start off, we have a briefing and uh, we were talking about watching uh, one of the other historians had watched Tombstone last night, and I would, but somebody had borrowed it. Um, but she, you know, every time you, you watch it 10, 15 times, you see something you didn't see the last time. Mm -hmm. It's all new. It's different. And like this area, these had, uh, with, for the OK Corral, there were loafing sheds on this side. Uh, there was more. And then actually, what the China, China camp, China camp was uh, out this way. Ah. So obviously not here today. And so did they put those adobes up for the movie Tombstone or were they already here? Because they look, they aged them pretty well if they put them up for that. Some were here for another production for Tombstone, yeah. but the problem with them is the cows like to rub their butts on them. Oh. <laughs> so it's taken them, a lot of them down. Yeah. Gotcha. And you're welcome to give it a try. <laughs> you got an itch, that's the place to go. <laughs> Yeah, because we hiked out. I mean, these look almost like the ones in the old town of Charleston. You know, we, oh, yeah. Different color. Different color, but. So the building over there was, was that Glory? No, the Morgan Freeman. Uh, uh, that was Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo Soldiers. So that oh, was that. Buffalo Soldiers with Morgan Freeman. Oh, okay. Uh, it's in really bad shape. It looks it. So we have a couple options. One is we take our time and the equipment and expense to tear it down. The other option is to get a production company to burn it or blow it up and pay us to take it down. So <laughs> yeah. That's so we're working on version two. Yeah. yeah. So, that's the way to go. But right here is where is where the is it happened. This is Fly's Photo Studio. And one thing that it took 34 seconds to for the whole thing to happen the whole okay shooting was 30 some seconds uh, it took three plus days to film it wow. one of the reasons is whenever they have you have glass in a movie set it's it's sugar glass so it's very easily breakable so a bottle a window they break well the problem is is they're filming in the desert in july it's hot mm -hmm. Sugar glass and heat don't do well together. 
Uh, rumors are they spent almost $100,000 on sugar glass. Wow. wow. Uh, so they just have to keep redoing, redoing like that. So this is where they, uh, was when the Glanton sh stuck his hand through and started shooting with Behan's gun. And then uh, that's when Doc Holliday, first of all, he has three shots with a double barrel shotgun. And then his two six shooters, I don't know, 18, 19 rounds he shot without yeah. breathing. <laughs> So, he was very good. Yeah. He had that dead aim, too. <laughs> That's why he said, well, at one point he was real drunk, and they said, well, you can't hit me because he goes, That's okay. I got two guns. I could shoot both of them. Yeah. <laughs>